It's the MasterChef knockouts. After surviving the heats, the 10 best amateur cooks have been split into two groups. Tonight, the second group of five is back to fight for their place in the next show. For the first time, they'll be thrown into a professional kitchen. Two trod now. We go, we go. I'm not going under. I'm not letting the nerves get to me anymore. It is absolutely crazy. Then they will return to MasterChef HQ to face their biggest challenge so far. At the end of today, one of them will be going home. As excited as I may be, our cooks have to perform. And now is the time for them to impress. Any slip up now, you're dead. Dead. Welcome back. There are great cooks left in this competition, and you are five of them. This is where it gets really interesting. Now, for the first time, you are going to cook in a professional kitchen. You've got to do us proud, guys. You've got to grab hold of it, and you've got to run with it. Now, go and get your chef's whites on. Go on, off you go. Cooking in the MasterChef kitchens is really daunting. Cooking in a professional kitchen just takes it to a whole new level of scariness. Angela does flavour. That girl can cook. A chicken with tarragon sauce was absolutely superb. Robert entered the competition and he was a daring cook. But as the competition's gone on, Robert's got more and more clarity. Those livers with the onions, they were absolutely delicious. The whole thing is going to be a lot of pressure, but that's why we're all here. We're here because we want to be tested. Luke is so good, in my opinion. I have never seen anybody in the invention test make cubes out of tofu and cover them in sesame. There's a lot of pressure involved with this challenge, cooking for paying public. That's worrying. Danny's a classic cook, but inspired by Spain. He gives himself huge amounts of work to do, and we doubt he can get it done. But he does. He achieves it. I can't wait. I'm so excited for this one, honestly. Like, I just can't wait to get in there. Sophie's got real style. Her food is gutsy and it's bold. We saw that with her calling card, Sardinian pasta and those clams running through it, which were absolutely wonderful. In a professional kitchen, I think it's going to be incredibly tough. It's early morning in King's Cross and the contestants are heading to the grain store. This 150-cover restaurant is the brainchild of chef Bruno Loubet. Ça marche, direct, one beef, one large risotto, one rabbit. Classically trained and Michelin star awarded, he's now pushing the boundaries with dishes focusing on the vegetables rather than the meat. The food at the grain store is quite different. I mean, it's an idea I have for many years. The veg is a star on the plate, basically, which means uh, there is a lot of prep. The meat become in second place. It's a different approach, and uh, obviously chefs have to adapt to that. Even with professional chefs in the kitchen, I'm very hands-on. So when I'm around, they know I'm around, and they know things have to be done right. It's a pressure, but this is a healthy pressure. Service. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Grain Store. We are very busy for lunch. Here we do a lot of prep with the vegetables. So I suggest we crack on. 
Although they will have sous chefs standing by, the five amateurs will be responsible for every dish on the lunchtime menu, during both prep and service. Pub manager Danny is making one of the two starters, butternut squash ravioli with deep-fried sage, rocket and mustard apricots, served with beurre noisette and pumpkin seed oil. What do you think? Well seasoned? Good? So what we're looking for is for you to make this beautiful little ravioli, really plumpy. You know, we want a nice bump on the top, yeah? During the service, you will have to time your pasta properly. How do you are with your timing? You good with timing? Ask me in a few hours. Have you done pasta dishes before? I've done pasta once. Once? Yeah. You only have a few hundred ravioli to do this morning, so that's, that's OK. By the end, you should be a, a pasta master. One of the biggest worries I've got is with the raviolis. I've made pasta once, but they never look like them. I mean, the raviolis have shown me probably the best I've ever seen. Today you're going to be in charge of this dish, which is a starter. So we'll have quite a lot to do. Preschool teacher Sophie will have to make the caramelised pork belly and grilled leeks with pickled walnuts, apple salsa, pork skin crisps and a pork jus. So the particularity of these dishes, the use of the leeks. What we do, it sounds bizarre, but basically we burn them in a wood-burning oven, mm. and then we take out the first two layers and we end up with this, OK? So that's what you have to do during your prep. And then here we have this uh, lovely pork skin, which have been uh, cooked in the stock, then sliced very finely and baked, OK? So during the service, you will have to put them under the grill a bit to crisp up even more. Brilliant. I'm really terrified. There's going to be so much to do. But I want to get cracking and get started and give it a really good go, but I am really scared. Lindy Hop dancer Robert is cooking one of the three mains, a trio of root vegetable purees, braised beef cheek, wood roast onions and a beef jus. This dish is so honest that it needs to be presented perfectly. So the three purees make a beautiful, nice, plumpy, generous kernel on the plate. So Rob, it's really important that you start off with your beef straight away because yes. it will take a long time to mm -hmm. braise. What we want is to cook it slowly so it's nice and moist, OK? It looks okay? sensational. You think you can do that? I, I hope so. I hope Great. so. Well, I hope so as well. Wow. The food looks fantastic. As long as I can cope with the prep and get the beef braised in time, then it's, it's literally just plating, I think. So, Angela, today you're going to be responsible of this dish, which is a main course. Businesswoman Angela's dish is a wild mushroom celeriac and trevise salad topped with a fried quail marinated in buttermilk and rosemary. You have to be careful with your timing again. Yeah, yeah. The quail need to be fried at the same time your mushroom is going on. And how long does that take, the, the quail? The that quail, uh, a few long. minutes. It's not long, is it? No, no. not long. OK, okay. that looks really difficult. <laughs> difficult? No, it's not. A bit of love. Yeah, yeah. And it's just happening, yeah, you know? OK. I'm really, really excited and really nervous as well. It's going to all be about timing and working calmly and not getting in a, in a fluster. And, yeah. Robotics engineer Luke has the final main on the menu. A Vietnamese salad topped with sea trout and seared squid. OK, in this dish, obviously the salad play a big role in the dish. So we want everything to be shredded nicely, you know, cut nicely, mm -hmm. everything thin, so it all comes together with this beautiful fragrant dressing. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Now, the trout, as I say, you can cook it nice and slowly and have a good control. And then your squid, you can give a bit more heat because it's quite wet, as well they will boil in the juice, which we don't want. Mm -hmm. Do you have any concern about the dish, or do you think you will be able to, to cope during the service? Um, I'm really looking forward to it. This is brilliant. This is exactly my kind of thing. I've been Great. very fortunate. I'm really excited. I can't wait to go. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. The timing's going to be interesting because it doesn't take long to do the actual cooking, but, you know, if I can get on top of that, I think I'll be OK. There are three hours of prep before service starts at midday, and the restaurant is expecting around 60 covers. The food we're doing here is not only about the service. 
it's also about the attention you give to the product beforehand. To make a pork jus to Bruno's standard, Sophie needs to braise the bones perfectly. Put a little bit more oil on this, otherwise it's too dry and, uh, right. and it becomes... Oh, that's walnut oil. Ah, oh, that's what I've used. Yes. That's what I've used. It's all right, it's all right. It's OK. That's vegetable oil. I'm feeling quite stressed. It's just there's still a lot to do and there's just not a huge amount of time. Across the kitchen, Angela is struggling with bones of her own as she has to prep 20 quail. Make sure before you, you go down, you always know your fingers are away. Eh? Yeah. So look, my finger are here, now I can go. I can. Okay. Yeah? The same here. Tack. Okay. I may try the little knife first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really difficult. I've never done anything like this before, which is slightly daunting, but I'm going to do it. Robert's under pressure to prep the beef cheeks as they need to slow cook for three hours. Uh, the first job, I'm just caramelising off the meat, browning it, getting some flavour in it. It needs to braise for quite a period of time. I just need to get on as quickly as possible so it goes in the oven and then hopefully it's going to be ready on time. This is my absolutely favourite type of food. I love slow cooking. I'm relishing it. <laughs> Over on the starters, Danny has already begun to make the ravioli. This is the pasta dough. I've just mixed it up in the uh, blender. Now I need to bring it together. The button squash ravioli, this is quite a technical dish. Pasta dough have to be the perfect consistency. If it's too dry, it will crack when you make the ravioli, and obviously during the cooking that would be a big problem. Pressure's on at the moment just to get this uh, to get this pasta done. Once I've got the dough done, I'll be happy. It's an hour in, and Robert's managed to get the beef cheeks in to slow cook. Three hours time, we'll have some lovely beef. Right, which will be an hour after service starts, really. Well, <laughs> we'll have some ready. We'll have some ready. Wonderful. But Sophie still needs to blacken the leeks for her pork and leek starter. I'm scared. Which will be one of the first dishes to go out. So they've got to be burnt on the outside, so the juice of the leek starts to steam the leek on the inside, so the leek is actually cooked all the way through, and then we'll lose the burnt exterior and you'll just have lovely, smoky, soft, perfectly cooked leek. Having boned the quails, Angela needs to get the marinade made so that it has time to work. You put straight away on your on your quail so they have the time to marinate. Okay. It's very important because it tenderizes them as well. Yeah, yeah. Not only season them, but it tenderizes them. Does the butter milk do that as well? Yes, yeah, the acidity. You know. okay. So it's quite important to put marinade there so they have a bit of time okay. to, to get on. Okay. I'm quite good at seasoning normally because it's big quantities. You think. Is that enough? Is that not enough? I don't want it too salty, but I want it to be nice. But yeah, no, I think it's good. Angela seemed to be a bit overwhelmed by the whole thing. Now she just started to pick up speed, so we see how they develop. I was really nervy, and now I'm in here, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm just getting on with it. So yeah, I feel better now that I'm here. It's halfway through prep, and Luke's almost finished all the veg for his Vietnamese salad. The particularity of this dish is all the veg have to be prepared really nicely in the morning. They have to be washed, they have to be sliced, they have to be cut in very thin little strips, which we call in our uh, chefy word, uh, julienne. This dish is so simple, I need it to be perfect. The salad has got uh, lots of little different elements to it. So you've got the, uh, the carrot, the cucumber, the mouli, the Chinese cabbage, the spring onions, the peanuts, the sesame seeds, <laughs> the mint, the coriander, and then the dressing. So it's getting the balance of everything right with that. Uh, that is a lot of ingredients. Everybody listen, please. We have to look professional, as professional as possible. You work in a professional kitchen now, so let's be professional, eh? Well, they're looking quite burnt, <laughs> which, is the good, which is a good thing. But I think some of them could do a thing a bit softer. This is... Uh, Uncharted territory, so I'm reckoning. I'm reckoning that's done. Chef, yeah, they are good. is they are this ready. okay? Yes, ready. Yeah, the leeks looks beautiful. They're perfect. They're soft inside. Yeah. 
Slightly burn on the outside, that's good. Yeah, right, okay. How are you doing? Yeah, okay. Vegetables took a lot longer to chop than I was expecting. With an hour till service starts, Luke turns to filleting 20 portions of sea trout. I have filleted fish before. Never um, trout, never anything of this size. Hopefully I'm doing all right. We're getting a little bit rough. Yeah, yeah a little, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we've bruised it slightly, you know, you've worked with it too much. If you're overworking the fish, you know, they get loose and you're going to get a really squashy, sludgy fish, you know. Okay. That's not what we're looking for at all. Right. Remember, we have only half an hour. You need to push now, you need to go. Because in half an hour, I'm going to come down on you, yeah? With service approaching and Sophie's starter first to go, time's running out to finish her apple and walnut salsa. Quite a lot to do. And I'm just frustrated, because I know that if I were a professional chef, I'd be going and I just haven't got knife skills, so I'm feeling like a bit of an idiot right now. It's annoying me. Danny's under pressure too, as he has the other starter and needs to finish over a hundred ravioli. So much prep, you just don't realise how much prep's involved. If they look great, they will cook very well. If they look, you know, a bit flat and the filling is oozing a bit on the side and all this kind of thing, then, I mean, things will go wrong. Yeah, I'm happy. The pasta didn't break and they've got high and there's no air in them, so... That looks good. You have some air bubble there and there, but it's not bad. For a first go, it's good. Thank but, you, sir. Um, oh, I didn't realise. You cut them already? No. Just what? use. Ah, oh, you push too much. They are cut already. I've just been pressing them. With the wrong side. Probably the wrong side. Yeah, so it's, they are cut. Well, we may have an issue then. It should be... Yeah, yeah I completely like understand. This. I completely understand. And then you cut the outside. Yeah. Let's try one. It may work. It won't look fantastic, but at least it will. We try quickly. We may have a little issue there. Maybe, maybe they're going to burst. Apparently, I pressed them too hard because I thought that was just the way they're going to cut out. But you can never be too confident. It's going to be right, yeah. It's okay, chef. Yeah. Sorry about that, chef. That's right. I mean, at least we managed to save it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's fine. Just go on, make sure we are ready, because you need to go a long way still. OK, yeah? Chef. We're back on track. I'm just glad the pasta never broke. Robert is calmly prepping his purees. I've got three purees to make, to mash to do first. There's no sense of panic, but perhaps there should be. You have to go faster. Eh? OK. Pan, milk, yep. go. Now it feels quite tense. There's a sense of, you know, something's coming and it's coming soon. With 10 minutes to go, these amateurs are about to experience their first professional service and they will have the added pressure of being visible to the diners. I think it's a lot harder because it's an open kitchen, because everyone can see them. They're going to be even more self-conscious. You know, if you burn something, people are going to know. But, um, yeah, hopefully that won't happen. Come on, let's get set up. Anyone here? Hello? Come on. It's dawning on us what's happening, and the chefs are getting a bit shouty now. OK, for the starter, the pork and the ravioli, you will go first. Um, I'm feeling slightly nervous for lunch. When you start, you better be ready. Can I have the grilled leeks and pork belly? Can I have the butternut squash, please? OK, ça marche, on order. One pork, one ravioli. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Bruno wants his diners served in minutes, so Sophie and Danny have to work quickly. Some ash, three ravioli, two pork. Sophie has prepped the leeks, but she still has to caramelise the pork belly and crisp up the pork crackling. OK, dress your leeks. The time this cook, you put your leeks on the plate. Yep. And you, by that time, your pork will be ready. OK, 
Okay, we finish this one quick. Danny's ravioli must also be cooked to order and the salad assembled. This is intense. It's scary. There you go, chef. OK, thanks. That's good. Service. One of you, you want pork belly? Yes, chef. Danny and Sophie are the only ones making starters, and the orders are now rushing in. Now you go with four pork. Four pork belly. Four pork, and you go with four ravioli. Yes, yes chef. chef. I don't know what I'm doing. After these two ravioli, you do three pork belly, and you do two ravioli, Danny. Yes, chef. I'm just completely stunned. I've no idea what I'm doing. Thank goodness chef is telling me what's coming up next. Hey guys, fast, 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 push, push, come on. I can't work fast enough. Can I get some more parmesan, please? I've got three at the moment. I know there's probably about 16 on, but for plating up, I've got three. That's how many he wants now. Come on, come on, come on. OK, thank you. Be careful, it's getting a bit smaller. Make, make sure you keep the size. OK, that's about 16. 18, quick. 17, please. Speed is a bit slow. I mean, usually we walk quicker in, a, in an environment like here. It's really lovely flavours. I love the crackling. It's great. And it just really worked well as a dish, I thought. It's gorgeous. It's really lovely. It's so soft and the pasta is so thin. Um, Thank you so much. With service in full swing, there's no let up for Sophie and Danny. Two pork belly, two avioli. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. So you have to start to accelerate. Yes, yeah, chef. We have to go quicker now. I'm not going under. I'm not letting the nerves get to me anymore. Hey, guys, push, push, push. Come on, yes, faster, chef. faster, faster. We have a lot to go now. I'm just a bit slow. The chef's getting a bit cross. And under the pressure, Sophie takes her eye off the grilled pork crackling. It's got to focus and do better. Service! Come on, guys, we have only two tables to go now, so you need to... Yes, chef. Serving, chef. Thank you. OK, three pork, three pork, and we yeah. finished. That's it, you finished. Then. Do you want me to give you a hand? Uh, yeah, OK. How Three. many slices? Three. And some jus, yeah? OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, last table two. Last table? Two. Last table, table two. Wow, oh, I'm jealous. No, I like the for that. Thank you very much. Really well put dish here from Sophie. Really well presented. There's a lot of things going on this plate. I love the fact that the pork is crispy on the outside. The leeks are lovely and soft. It's really, really lovely. Really like it. Danny's starter is lovely. That ravioli, it's perfectly sealed. He seasoned it brilliantly with the Parmesan cheese. And the, uh, and the sweetness, that apricot, is lovely, John. Really lovely. OK, well done, guys. That was good. The standout was really good. So that's the first thing. It was a bit slow, you know. You have to really get up and, and go on with it to deliver. But the standout was pretty good, so well done. Thank you, Chef. Have a little rest. We don't need service. Thank you, my love. I think I did OK, I mean. I just thought, well, I just want to go back in. <laughs> I just want to go back in and help. It was very hot and very fast and quite scary. With all the starters away, orders for the main courses start to come in. Can I have the beef, please? The beef. Can I have the squid, please? Yep. Now the pressure moves on to Robert, Angela and Luke. One beef, one sea trout. One beef, one trout, away. Yes? One beef, one trout. Yes, yes, yes. Can you answer, please? Yes, yes, Can you answer? Yes, yes, yes. 
Luke and Robert need to time their dishes to arrive at the pass together. When will yours be ready? Uh, well, my beef is pretty well warm, so yeah. it should only yeah. be a few minutes, I think. I can be ready in uh, five yeah. minutes. We go. Okay. One beef, one trout. OK. Luke needs to dress his salad, but first must perfectly cook the trout and squid to order. I'm cooking things here that can be overcooked very, very easily. You know, you've got a hot plate here, it's different temperatures all over. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's good, though. OK, come on, guys, eh? you have to go yeah. fast. Eh? Okay. Start to dress, start to dress. With the beef cheeks cooked, Robert's main challenge is plating up. This one here is probably the hardest bit, the quenelle. You know, they have to be plumpy. It's about the veg. You remember what I said this morning? Garnish become a very important part of the dish, so we want nice, plumpy quenelle. OK, is that the best you can do with your quenelle? Uh, I think it probably is. Are you happy with that going out? No, I'm not. We need to do another one. OK. Yes. OK. OK, that's better, that's better. You're getting there. Yeah. OK, that's fine, yes? yes. Service. Could have been a little bit tidier on the plates. I ordered the uh, squid, but the fish is very, very nice and uh, very crispy. And the vegetables are nice and well seasoned. Two trout, one beef, one quail. Yes, chef. It's Angela's turn to deliver. She must batter and deep fry her quail, as well as cook the celeriac cubes and mushrooms to order. It's hectic, very busy, trying to keep it all together and get it all done in time. OK, can we hurry up with the quail, please? OK, come on, one quail, one quail. You only have one quail to do. OK, do, do the salad first, salad first, salad first. OK, go on with the quail. OK, come on, come on, come on. A little bit of dressing, we need to go. Let's table 16, please. Service. Thank you. So I had the sautéed mushrooms and buttermilk quail. I thought it was really, really beautiful, actually. Each element seems really well cooked. So if I was going to give it a down point, it would be on the presentation, but it, then taste-wise, absolutely perfect. It's over halfway through service, and orders are flying in for all three main courses. Come on, guys, you have to push, you have to push, you have to go quicker, eh? Come on, put a bit more mash in there, you haven't got enough. On the beef dish, Robert's still trying to perfect his quenelles. Ah. Quenelling isn't easy, it's a nightmare. I'll do this one and you do the next one. Okay. Start the beef, start the beef. Yeah, I think I have to step in because it's taking a bit long and we have quite a few order to uh, come out. OK, you finish your plate. Onions, go. Okay. A trout, are you ready? Uh, yeah, trout, yeah. Come on, come on. It's like nothing I've ever done before. Just making sure the skin's crispy and the pan's on my hands. Two trout now. Two. We all go with the fish, be careful. We don't want any burnt skin, yeah? Can we go or not? Okay? This one is on the limit, limit. No, no, we don't go. Turn on as one, turn on as one. With multiple orders on the go, Angela's struggling with the pace. I've got a few more minutes on my pail. It's not in yet. Everything's done last minute. It's just trying to get everything done at the same time. Very slow. I'm not used to that. So slow. OK, now we're going with three quail, one beef, three trout. Three trout, yeah. Yes. Yes, chef. Make sure your last plate is perfect, perfect, okay. yeah? This is the last chance to get it right. Right, OK. This is the yeah. most beautiful plate you ever dress, yeah? yeah? You have to finish in, uh, you know... Finish in style. You're looking slightly better than the beginning of the series. It's all about confidence. Three quail, yeah? Three quail, yes, chef. How many am I doing? Three. That's enough, isn't it? Come on, guys, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. We go all together as a team. You cook for your friend, you cook for your family, you cook for love. Yeah. 
Okay, can you finish the trot, please? Quick. We need now. We need now. Quick. We're waiting, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. It is absolutely crazy. Come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. We have to go quick now. Come on. Okay, service. Marvellous. Yeah, yeah. Marvellous Fantastic. Stuff. Thank you. This is Luke's squid with, with the trout. Look how light and delicate that is, John. The squid just needs a little bit less time, but I like the sea trout, I like the vegetables, lovely crust, really lovely crispy skin, I like the dressing. It's really nice, very really refreshing. That was exhausting, it was, it was pretty intense. Well done, Angela. That quail, crispy on the outside, beautiful and really moist inside. Dish of the day for me. That was one of the most exhilarating experiences that I've ever had. It was. Fabulous. Robert hasn't quite mastered how to do a quenelle, which is a shame, really. But the carrot and the beetroot puree are, are perfectly made. The beef is lovely. It's falling apart, it's sweet, and it's sticky. Incredible buzz. Um, just a really exciting thing to do. OK, guys, service over. Now we clear everything, we clean the place. The sundown was good. The delivering uh, a bit too slow, you know. Um, I think Danny was very confident during the service. They seemed to be in control and aware of what's going on. And he's definitely a team player, which I like. I want this, you know, this is what I want to do. It's just intense, but I love it, you know. I just love the pressure. Sophie, she was all right, but she seemed to think everybody is waiting for her or something, you know. She didn't seem to work as a team. I found it absolutely impossible to keep track of how many I was meant to do for the next order. I was just slow. I was slow. Angela, she seemed to understand the whole concept of the dish. Overall, she's done a very good job, but a bit more pressure and we will have a lot of problems. I thought I'd crumble under the pressure of it. I did better than I thought I would, and I really enjoyed it. Robert was doing the beef. We did have a bit of issue with the um, presentation. It seemed to be a bit clumsy. I loved everything, apart from my big stumbling block, was the dreaded Quenelle. And I think I'll be dreaming about them tonight. Luke probably have the easiest dish, but I believe that even if you have a dish a bit more complicated, we'll have done quite well. It was really good fun. I knew it was going to be intense. I didn't realise quite how intense. That was a great day. That was a really great day. The food that came from that kitchen was extraordinary. We finally gave our five amateurs the opportunity that they wanted to work in a professional kitchen. But now they've got a tough test. I think this lesson will hold them all in very good stead. Welcome back from your first big MasterChef adventure. I really hope you got inspiration from your time in the kitchen. And I'd like to see that inspiration now. Today we're going to ask you to do just one thing. Invent for us one exceptional dish. 10 minutes to create that dish and then 80 minutes to cook it. Come and get your ingredients. Today's ingredients consist of a variety of meats and fish, including grouse, squab pigeon, lamb, gurnard, sole, and oysters a selection of fruits and vegetables, as well as an extensive larder. You've got just 60 seconds to make your mind up. Luke, you need to make a decision quick.
this is an important part of the competition. It's getting serious. So serious, we've actually invited somebody in today to taste your food with us. Two-starred Michelin chef Marcus Waring. Today is really important, and I hope you've chosen wisely, because at the end of this, one of you is leaving the competition. You've got 80 minutes. Over to you. Off you go. Exciting day here, but very, very nervous cooks. Our five heard Marcus wearing and literally all froze. To be honest, I try not to think about who I'm cooking for. Obviously, it's an extra level of pressure, which I don't need, so I'm just ignoring it. Luke? Yes? You selected your ingredients as if you were making five different dishes, put things in the box, took things out of the box, put things in the box, took things out. Have you actually decided what you're going to cook for us? I have decided now, yeah, I'm cooking profiteroles. Uh, they're going to have an orange cream inside, and then there's going to be grated chocolate on top of that, I'm making a salted caramel sauce. Then I've got hazelnuts to garnish, and, yeah, that's where we are. Do you not think it's a bold fella that serves a profiterole up in front of a Michelin-starred chef? Yeah, it is what it is. You've just got to sort of elevate it to the next level, and hopefully I'm doing that. What can go wrong with this dish? I've got to nail the pastry. I can't have soggy profiteroles. The um, presentation's going to be important as well. Hopefully I can take some of what I saw in the professional kitchen and, and apply that kind of presentation to what I'm going to cook today. Luke, good luck. Thank you. Luke is making us profiteroles. I mean, going to be fun now. Right now, he's on his second batch of shoe pastry because the first one's gone a little bit awry. And if that second batch of shoe pastry doesn't work for Luke, bam! It's going to be a sad day. It's cook for Marcus, it's just like boom. I mean, that is it. You've hit it, haven't you? You know, chef, two stars. They don't come much bigger, do they? El Danny. How you doing? Are we going to get something Spanish? No, I'm going for game. I've never done it before, but I'm going to do it three ways. I'm going to do a roasted breast, a game and prune sausage, and I'm trying to confit some legs here. Then I want to do a sauce with the pancetta and prunes, sprout puree, and, yeah, that's where I'm up to so far. I may have said this before. Wouldn't it be better if you did less things and gave yourself some more time and were, were, were calmer? Yeah, I don't know. It's just the way I am. I've always been like this all my life. I'm a bit all over the place. I just need to show you that I can go all out. Why do it one way? I can do it three ways. Because one day you may not have time to go all out and you'll end up just being out. Yeah, well, hopefully being in the restaurant has shown me, you know, how the timing's so important and everything needs to come together at once. And, I mean, it was just a great day there and learnt so much off Bruno. What about Marcus? As long as I just get some sort of positive, you know, on something that I put on the plate, then I'll be happy. Danny, as always, is going for lots of different ingredients and putting them all together. I hope for Danny that he delivers something which looks fantastic and it has clarity and it has enough dignity that Marcus doesn't string him up by his ankles. You're halfway. 40 minutes to go. That was hot. Burn my whole hand. I'm really looking forward to this test, apart from the Marcus wearing bit at the end. <laughs> right at the last minute, in comes the nasty sting in the tail, and that is really scary. Angela's doing Angela food. She's got a roasted pigeon with a sweetened sauce made with masala and the legs of the bird. John, yummy, and Angela can do it but not if she doesn't believe she can. Are you scared of Marcus? Absolutely petrified of him. I've seen him, you know, completely pull dishes apart. Hopefully, I'm going to get the nice side of him. Well, there's one way to get the nice side of Marcus. Yeah. Cook him something delicious.
Just 30 minutes left, guys. 30 minutes. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would ever cook for Marcus Waring. I'm just going to try and produce some food that he can't argue with. I've got to make sure that it is absolutely full of flavour and cooked to perfection. How are you feeling? I think I'm OK. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. So I'm going to do the, the roast rump of lamb. I've done some cannellini beans. I've got some slow-roasting tomatoes in the oven and I've done a salsa verde. Have you given thought to how you're going to, going to present this? I'm not going to overdo it. So I have an idea in my head about what I'm going to do on the plate, but I've got good colours and I've got good flavours. It helps me a lot if I think about cooking the food I love for the people I love. I just have to pretend that I love you guys and Marcus right now. That's not difficult. I love the sound of Sophie's lamb with the salsa verde and those cannellini beans. That lamb up has been pan fried, it can take about 12 or 15 minutes, but it needs a good 10 minutes to rest so that the meat's not tough. I'd be disappointed if I went home today. I would be very disappointed. These are the times when, you know, you've just got to pull everything out of the bag that you've got, put it in front of the judges, and hope for the best. Dessert, Robert. A dessert, absolutely. Why? I just felt like the ingredients just spoke to me, really. When the ingredients spoke to you, what did they say? They said to me, an apple almond treacle tart. Ah. Oh. With some poached apple, praline crumb, hazelnut brittle, chantilly cream, flavoured with brandy, and blackberries with the coolie around the side. Sounds ace, mate. Well, we'll see what it tastes like. Aren't you tempted to robotise this and stick something on the dish that's unnecessary? I think everything is pretty, is pretty standard on this one. It's kind of very much classic flavours and classic tastes. It sounds absolutely delicious. Robert's got one issue, and that is making sure that tart is set. Because if that tart isn't set in the middle, then the whole game is over. Because he's left with some Chantilly cream and some blackberries. Your final six minutes. If I'm asked to judge, I take it very seriously. If someone's upset me, I'm going to say it. Two minutes. But equally, if something tastes amazing, it will make me smile. I'm looking for the chef that can put a smile on my face. 30 seconds. Stop. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Marcus Waring. How are you? Great. Young son. John, nice to see you. Angela, bring your plate up. Angela has roasted the pigeon and served it with Jerusalem artichoke crisps and puree, wild mushrooms, cavallonero, and a blackberry and masala sauce. I think the presentation's horrible. Do you? Yes. It's not very good. Well, some good news and bad news. OK. The good news is, actually, it doesn't taste too bad. OK. It's not a disaster. It doesn't, it doesn't taste as bad as it looks. But there are fundamental, massive errors in, okay. in the execution. The pigeon could have been cooked better. The sauce I like, and it's got good, good flavour. The puree is lumpy. Apart from it looking like a dog's dinner, mm. it has good flavour. The pigeon, you can see what's happened. You roasted it, you cut it down the centre, you opened it up and you put it back in the oven. And you can see the scar of that. It's almost bruised, it's been battered. But I've got to say, I like the texture of the crisps, I like the mushrooms and I love the sauce. 
your sauce is sweet, not too sweet. There's good seasoning on there. Taste divine, looks really scruffy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, she can cook. Mm. What I cooked is my kind of food, so I should have been able to do it perfectly. I'm really pleased they like the sauce, though. Luke, your turn. Luke's dish is orange cream-filled profiteroles sitting on hazelnut caramel topped with chocolate shavings and served with a salted caramel sauce. Caramel or toffee is a colour. And this is not toffee nor caramel in colour. Yeah, I should have taken it further. It smells more like butter. Luke, it's not a dessert for me. OK. There are glaring errors there. The sauce is completely wrong. The profiteroles don't look right to me. For me, it's a shoe bun, it's not a profiterole. A nice average flavour, it's, it's pleasant. But I think it's a little safe and basic. Ah! It, 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 is, it is disappointing. It's edible, it's, it's pleasant. You've picked your moment, haven't you, to, to, to mm. trip up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you really have. If there was anyone that was flying through this competition, it was this young fella. Really? I, mean, yeah, I can't believe what I'm seeing in front of me, Luke. I mean, this is not great. It, it, this is disappointing. I wish you had have gone savoury. So do I. Sorry, mate. Yep, yeah, no, fair enough. Thanks anyway. Thank you, Luke. Cheers. <laughs> it wasn't good. The comments were completely fair. Yeah, very frustrating. Danny, your turn, please. Danny's made a trio of grouse. Roast grouse breast, confit grouse legs resting on a hollow bone, and a grouse prune and bone marrow sausage wrapped in pancetta, with potato fondant, Brussels sprout puree, carrots, and a prune and red wine jus. Have you brought us a note there, Danny? Uh, no, it's a gel pack. What have you done to this? Roasted it. From raw? Yes. What? Why? I don't know. No reason why. No <laughs> reason why. Seriously? Yeah. OK. Do you think an eye should be cut that way? I don't know. Well, why did you do it, then? It's a very confusing dish, I must say. It doesn't come together. The best bit for me, I think, was the sausage. But there's things in there that don't need to be there, that being one of them. The legs are just completely uh, annihilated. To me, it looks like you put them in the deep fat fryer and then put them in a hot plate for 24 hours. They're just a complete disaster. I don't, I don't think you've done a good job of that at all. Um, not sure why the prunes are there. Carrots don't really feel right on the plate. The artichoke was badly cooked. It's just too much, badly executed, trying too hard, and that's probably why you burn yourself. Your breast is nice, the sauce is lovely, the bone marrow sausage is lovely, but... I'm pretty sure, I've stood in front of you before and said, why are you attempting so much? There's some flavours on there which are all right, Danny, but I've got to say, it's just... You've done some over-the-top dishes before, but this is just way over the top. Too much, mate. Thank you. It's a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Because, you know, you're a master chef and you think you just want to prove yourself, but it's not the right thing to do. You need to concentrate on a plate of food that they're going to eat. You know, it's not putting a buffet on one plate, is it? I mean, I completely respect what they said. All I can do is take it on board. Sophie, please, could you? Sophie's made roasted rump of lamb topped with salsa verde on cavallonero and a cannellini bean mash served with roasted tomatoes and a lamb jus. I'm kicking myself about the presentation. 
to me, it looks like a plate of food that I'd serve my children. What I cannot get my head around is opening a tin of beans. I just don't get that, and I don't get that. Have you noticed no one's eaten one? No, I know. <laughs> Do you know why? Because we all know what they taste like. It's a tomato that I'd normally have with my brunch. It's, it's uneventful, it's boring. I think it's a very weak attempt at a dish. I don't think it's very skillful at all. And I don't think you've pushed yourself either. I've got nicely cooked cabbage. I, I like the sauce, I like the seasoning, and I like the saltiness on the outside of the lamb. It's never going to set the composition on fire. That's the issue. I think the combination of, of salsa verde, cavolo nero, lamb and white beans is OK. I'm with Marcus. I think you played a bit safe here. It was a risk I took, but it was the wrong idea. And I don't know if I can afford to have the wrong idea at this stage. Robert, your turn. Last up is Robert, who's made an apple and almond treacle tart with poached apples on a praline crumb topped with a hazelnut brittle, brandy chantilly cream and blackberries. Do you know the funny thing about this, Robert? Yes. You noticed how we're all going back for more. I really like that. I really do. I think the cream, the Chantilly, tastes delicious, and I like the fact that you can taste the brandy. The, the treacle tart, I think it's cooked beautifully well. Fantastic cooking, great case. Beautiful and moist in the center. I think the blackberries are fantastic. You've got the sweet and sour just right. And I like the apple on the side there. I think it's great. Really, really enjoyed that. Thank you. You have got some fantastically flavoured things on the plate, you really have. That is delicious. I've known Marcus for a number of years and uh, I've judged with him now for a few years as well. And really, if I heard him say, I really, really like that. Fantastic. Nice job. So we've got an apple puree treacle tart. And I've got to say, I think it's fantastic. And on the invention test, Robert, this, I think, is close to awesome. I think you should be really proud of this. Thank you very, very much. Really Thank good. You. Thank you. Delicious. Good job, buddy. <laughs> what can I say? I'm amazing. Amazing comments. Phenomenal. I've got to be honest and say that's the first dish that I've really put in front of the judges that I was kind of pretty well 100% happy with. We've got to judge this now. Off you go. Thank you. Marcus, the standard this year? I've really enjoyed this year. You know what's really nice about it? I can walk away with a smile on my face thinking I've had one fantastic tasting dish. And you didn't make one contestant cry. I know. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Jess. Thanks very bye much bye. indeed. Apart from Robert, I think we've got four disappointed and scared contestants. In the invention test, Robert did amazingly well. I mean, that tart was perfect edging, beautifully cooked, the sauce was good, the chantilly cream was good. You've got to say, that for an invention test is pretty cool. I'm on an astounding high. Uh, you know, the challenge now is to keep that up. I've got to agree with Marcus. Angela's flavours were really good. I think they were defined. Angela ended up throwing the ingredients at the plate and the consequence was it, it looked a shambles. But I thought Angela's dish actually tasted beautiful. I did get some nice comments, but, you know, I made mistakes today, so I don't know if they'll forgive those mistakes. Young Luke. What on earth happened to Luke? He tried to invent something. It wasn't very good. There's still decent touches to it, but it's way below his average. I should have just gone with the first thing that came into my head. I took too many risks today. It was really, really poor. With Sophie, actually, what we had was very safe food with few techniques and not a great delivery. 
There is no doubt about it, Sophie today showed a real lack of ambition. If you are going to go for simple process, you've got to make damn sure it's delicious. I know I can do better, and so I would hate to go out now. I'd hate to go out on the back of that. Danny frustrates me because I know he can cook, because he cooked the breast of that grouse brilliantly. He made a wonderful sweetened sauce. But at what point does he suddenly think, maybe somebody has told me I shouldn't stick 27 processes that I haven't got time for and run around the bench until I hurt myself and I shouldn't be doing it. Marcus said, you've done too much and that's probably why you burnt yourself. I'm just nervous now because, you know, not exactly had the best of comments, so I could be going on. One of them's going. Who's going to be? Marcus, he was impressed by a couple of you, one in particular. We made our decision. The contestant leaving us. Is Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. I'm not that surprised I made the wrong choice today. But I am proud to have got this far. I will look back on the whole MasterChef experience as being a really brilliant adventure. I'm really pleased to have done it. And it's been great. It was a fantastic day for me, anyway. It's a bit sad for all the people who got a hammering, but, you know, great for me. I thought I was a goner. <laughs> Just to go out now would have been absolute devastation. I feel very, very, very lucky. I had a disaster today. That is amazing to be in the final eight. I mean, amazing. Next time, the eight best amateur cooks in the country come together for the first time as they battle for a coveted place in the semi-finals. Today, they've got a point to prove. Can't play it safe here now. You've got to absolutely go for it. It's too much on a plate. Wow. Very, very clever, and I like your style.